Um, hi everybody! We are finally publishing our seamstress tag video. If you're not aware, um, this is something that's been going around YouTube for the past, I guess, couple of months at this point. Um, all of the other, well seemingly all of the other um, sewing YouTube channels have um, done this seamstress tag and so finally we are contributing. So <laughs> Abby doesn't know much about know this but about. it's really <laughs> just a list of 12 questions okay. that we answer oh. so people can get to know us and then... So you know these questions but I don't? That seems unfair. I haven't read them either. Okay. <laughs> I mean I watched some of the videos I see. but that's it. Um, so the first one is easy. It's who are you? So as a team we are inside the hymn. Mm -hmm. Um, individually, <laughs> I'm Lindsay. <laughs> I'm Abby. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot of you guys probably know this, yeah. but I think the idea is that if you follow the tag around YouTube, you get introduced to people that I you don't see. know yet. Yeah, so yeah, we are a YouTube duo. Most of our videos are us together, mm -hmm. um, or we've collaborated on an idea, or we help each other with something. So two for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, the next question is, when and why did you start sewing? We kind of answered this a long time ago. Yeah. When and why? How many years has it been now? Because we, did we start the same year? Mm-hmm. Do you remember how many years it is now? Hasn't it been four? When did you get married? 2011. It was that following summer. So 2012. So that's four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Four and years. Why? why? Um, I have summers off from work. I'm a speech pathologist. I work at an elementary school. So I get those nice hours of summers off. So I was just sitting on my porch one day and feeling a little bored, but not really because I like being bored <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, and just suddenly out of nowhere Googled sewing lessons in Charleston, South Carolina. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. I really don't. I mean, it must have been something. Um, commercial or something must have happened that I didn't even know Sublimin subliminally mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah I just out of nowhere googled it a shop sh um, popped up five eight seams and I went there um, you just brought, bought a sewing machine brought it there and they showed you how to set it up so it's literally what I did I just like bought a sewing machine just like that took it there and was hooked ever since then yeah, so for me, I had just moved to Charleston, um, I didn't know anybody here, and I was looking to meet new people, so I went on that website meetup.com mm -hmm. and found a crafting meetup, and so I joined that, and then the very next meetup that they were going to have was at 5 8 Seams, where they were going to have like a 101 sewing lesson, mm -hmm. and sort of for many years, I'd always had in the back of my hand, in the back of my head, like, oh, that would be something cool to learn. Mm -hmm. So I went to that um, craft meetup, sewed a little tote bag, the next day went and bought a machine, and then brought it in, just like you mm -hmm. did, and said, Help yes. me! I don't know what to do with this. I don't and even think I like took the tape off my box. No, going. yeah, mine was completely sealed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they and then we both ended up taking lessons yeah. there for a while. Do you remember when we met through there? I don't, I don't know. either. But we ended up in the same class after mm -hmm. a while, and then just got together and sewed together a few yeah. times. I remember then... that there was a foursome you and three other people were mm -hmm. like a little group and then because I was in another class on a different night there were four of us that were in a different group mm -hmm. but I was always kind of like eyeing girls group <laughs> like what is their little group about yeah. um, and so then I remember they asked me to come over to our now our friend Sarah's house to mm -hmm. sew and there were five of us that day one of the girls never showed back up to one no. of our sewing circles <laughs> ever again. No. <laughs> so then it became the four of mm -hmm. us sewing. Sarah ended up having two children yes. since then. Um, Amber, as some of you know, um, still sews all mm -hmm. the time. Um, so yeah, that our little foursome is down to a threesome. And then Abby and I started this. Yeah. So yeah, I wish, I think, we ought to talk to Amber and see if she remembers more she about. She probably remembers. She seems to have a better memory for that kind yeah. of random stuff. Yeah, I feel like we should have like a. It wasn't that far in to 
me learning how to Well, sew. I started in the spring, I feel like, and I you started, started in the summer. summer so like maybe June. Maybe a couple months yeah. after that. Yeah, sometime in the fall. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, what is your most disastrous make? I know right offhand. I mean, well, obviously, or, no, mine is. Because I, I, I show you, but I show you my disasters. I have a recent disaster. Remember that um, Megan Nielsen posted that off-the-shoulder tutorial dress? Yes. And I just picked out the right fabric for it, and it was just like this giant tent-like thing. It was so like, cute. It still looks like that. You told me to chop it off, make it top. I yeah. haven't done that yet. That it would kind of look like this. Very trappy. Yeah, like I thought it looked better than she did. Yeah. And I'm not so sure that's necessarily a disaster because it's salvageable. A disaster is something that goes in the garbage. Well, I guess one of the my first knit project that went in the garbage. I um, use like one of those free tutorials online. You like no measure. You just like you know draw like a tube, <laughs> and it was super cheap knit fabric. Um, my first kind of experience sewing knit fabric. Oh, that thing was nasty. Yeah. <laughs> that was like wonky side seams and pulling of things. Yeah. Not wearable. Mine was a knit skirt too. I was trying to do like the fold over mm -hmm. knit skirt and I was doing all in a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch and the fabric was really thin. I remember that. And it was going wrong from the very beginning, but you know how you just keep, as a yeah. beginner, you're <laughs> yeah. like, I can make this work. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried to cut it into a high-low hem, and then it was too short, and the Ugh. hem was like not, because you know, when you DIY a high-low hem, yeah, it's they're not perfect. gonna be good. <laughs> so that one was pretty bad. Remember that pleated skirt I made that was like green and white on the outside, and then in the pleat, I yes. put a pink one? Yes. That, that was, was awful. That was wild. That was really, really bad. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, I could think of so many. Someone commented, maybe on Instagram, maybe on my personal Instagram, about how I was a brave sewist. Yeah. And I think that is true, which is why I have so many disasters. Because I really just go for mm -hmm. it and don't look back. And if it doesn't work out, oh well. Oh well. <laughs> it's a good attitude to have. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so what is your favorite place to go fabric shopping? I think hands down we're going to say New York's well, yeah, district, right? Yeah, New York was amazing. We've been there twice mm -hmm. now. We make a whole little girls trip of it and just fabric shop for yeah, hours there's and hours. No shows, <laughs> no dinners, no yeah. sightseeing. The first time we tried to eat better dinners. We went to like special restaurants and stuff. The second time we're like, oh, here's a restaurant. Let's stop and eat. <laughs> right, exactly. I don't think we left the garment district. Mm -hmm. Those four or five didn't. blocks, we didn't leave. Yeah, we, we even stayed there that time mm -hmm. so that we just would go swing by, drop off, drop mm -hmm. off some fabric and um, go back out again. So yeah. yeah, that was amazing. Did you hear that Perrin closed? I always called it Perone. Perone. I don't know how you pronounce it. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. They were there for like decades. I know. Yeah, he was older. Yeah, I guess the rents are going up really high, too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we have to say New York, probably. Yeah. Awesome. Everybody needs to go there at least once. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Bring an extra bag of luggage. Yes. We always end up. Yes. And then you can just put it, pay to have that. Because we do carry on, and then mm -hmm. you can pay to have that luggage checked. Checked. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Metro will ship for you, yes, which is helpful. Yes, that was super helpful. And he doesn't even, he should charge me more than he does. Shh. Don't put that on the internet. He doesn't watch these. <laughs> you never know. No. Kashi. Yeah. Kashi he will ship. Watching. <laughs> okay. Um, um, what is your most used pattern? Hmm. Probably the linden sweatshirt. Mm. I've made lots of lindens, although, gosh, this is the laurel purse. This is number five for me, and I've made one for my mom. So that one's pretty up there, too. The Linden and the Laurelhurst. Mm -hmm. They're taking too long to count how many Lindens <laughs> to backtrack and think, really? and think about it. See, I'm the complete opposite. I really? like, I'm a one and done. One and done. I don't know I why. like to re I will remake. I mean, I won't remake a project that's like a special dress just because it's like the same exact thing but a different fabric. Mm -hmm. But like kind of these basic pieces, mm -hmm. yeah, I make... Again and again. Yeah. I think that, I mean, if I had to pick one, probably one of my more recent ones, which would be the um, Tunic Bible. Mm -hmm. I made three yeah, of those. Three cells, yeah. Three versions of that. That's probably a record. Yeah. And only because they end up looking so Well, yeah, they're different. completely different. Yeah. Yeah. So that would probably be it for me. But I guess for me, it's like 
making the garment for the first time and you know following all the instructions and figuring it all out once I do that then like the allure has mm -hmm. worn off so yeah I guess the difference between us two is like I make a lot more basic stuff that I can wear to work and mm -hmm. I, I work at an elementary school so you know you can dress up if you want but most people just dress a little more casually so I can wear this Laurelhurst as long as I you know I've got some nice pants on some nicer shoes mm -hmm. to work so I'm more likely just to mm -hmm. make a bunch of these because they're comfy yeah and I can wear it to work yeah and for me it's like knits. the one and done dress it's like well I don't get to wear it that much and right yeah maybe I could be converted <laughs> okay, so your most dreaded sewing task? Buttons? Buttons. Oh, <laughs> totally buttons. My, um, I've got a really nice sewing machine, um, but I hate the buttonhole foot. It's like this fancy little sensor thing, and it's supposed to sense the thickness of the fabric and then sew all the buttonholes evenly. It does not sew each one the same. It's supposed to. That's the whole point of it. And the sensor is further over so you can't sew the right side of the button placket because the sensor is off so you have to flip it and go the opposite way or put fabric mm -hmm. on the other side but it doesn't work when you do that you could put the same fabric on the other side and it gets all confused and you've like looked at the manual like yes looked at I, this. yes and I actually because I was so I made the Rosa shirt dress and it's got those little tabs and the tab obviously is way too narrow yeah. to reach the sensor. So I put the other tab underneath it and, and you know, so it would go evenly through. It would sew the one side and then it would keep on going for the other side. Weird. I know. So I ordered. Why um, don't you just get out your basic That's brother. what I was going to do. Is And I've done it in the past. But I just really want it to work. Like, I know. you know, I keep trying. Like, this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one that works. You can't move the sensor? No. It's this special fancy little foot. It's too fancy. It's like too fancy that it's to a fault. <laughs> Gosh, it's but it really seems like fundamentally it's not right. Oh, that's I disappointing. Know. It's so frustrating. So I actually ordered what I thought I was going to get the one that looked like on my old brother. Mm -hmm. You know, the little mm -hmm. white one. Mm -hmm. Um, and it came, I don't even know what it was. It was on eBay, and it looked <laughs> like it was going to be exactly the same. I put it on, and I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't even use it. Like, yeah. So, yeah, buttons are nerve-wracking. Um, I guess dreaded also would be, like, just you don't look forward to it. I don't know. What else? I kind of, I mean, I like zippers. Even invisible mm -hmm. zippers I like. I don't love zippers. I don't mind... I mean, I guess it depends on the project. Like, hemming rayon chalet isn't the most fun. Hemming silk no. isn't great. No, but I usually cheat and just, like, surge and turn once. <laughs> so, which makes it so much easier. Um, nobody else knows. Um, <laughs> maybe sewing. I don't know. I kind of like that, too. I don't know. Ripping things out, I would say, Yeah, is my most dreaded. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still working on my little game that I play with myself where I try and get through an entire project without, without I know, anything. I know, I didn't think at the end, like, oh, I didn't have to rip. You've done it before? Yeah. I've never done it. You make things over and over and over again, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I had to get this. I've literally this never done it. And it's like, sometimes it'll be just the stupidest little thing mm -hmm. that I have to pull it out for, and I'm like, no, I was so close. <laughs> you should, like, put it out in your car so that you, like, take the extra time to do it correctly. I do that. I mean, I don't put it in my car, but yeah. I do take the time. Yeah, but maybe if you knew you had to walk out. I know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. True. That's true. Okay, so on the other side of that coin, what's your favorite sewing task? Um... Um, picking out the fabric for it. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't really count, does it? That's, That's not really sewing. Mm. I think I kind I of like, it's not even the finishing techniques, which I guess most people would say because it's like finalizing it. For me, it's like getting to the point where you can try it on. So like attaching yes. a waistband mm -hmm. or you know, getting the this, side seams. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. That is fun. I know, I always look forward to that point where I can try mm -hmm. to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Good. <laughs> that was quick and easy. What is your favorite sewing entertainment? For me, it probably is Instagram. Yeah, like, I, I love I scrolling always, through yeah, Instagram. That's my main, that's really the only social media I do is Instagram. Yeah. Um, I love to look through, see what people have made, and I'm always searching it 
hashtags um, for finished projects. Like I'll hashtag Laurel first and see what people mm -hmm. have made. Gives me ideas for what I want to make. Mm -hmm. So I use that a lot, and I I do find that entertaining. Yeah. Some other ones that I do would be like flipping through sewing books. Mm -hmm. um, we just talked about in our more recent favorites video about um, going to the library and getting sewing books. I find that to be entertaining. Um, podcasts? Are you listening to any no. sewing podcasts? No. Did you watch The Great British Sewing Bee? No. Do you watch I Project Runway? I watched Runway? the first two, but I haven't caught up on the other one. Project Runway? So those are all things that I do. And shopping. Online I was going to say, I was going to ask you, does that count? I think I mean, that's, enter that's totally entertaining, entertaining to me. Yeah, yeah. that is like an, an enjoyment. Like. Yeah, <laughs> I agree 100%. Oh, here's a good one for you, Abby. Printed or PDF? PDF. Well, <laughs> unless it's a really, really big um, pattern, like lots of different pieces, then PDF. But I do go back and forth. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I really love a printed pattern because you don't have to print it out and tape it together. But then I have to trace it because I will ruin it if I cut into it. So PDF... I don't trace PDFs. Lindsay traces PDFs. I just cut in. I would rather reprint it and tape it than trace it. Maybe that's your most dreaded sewing task. I don't mind because I, I will do it in front of the TV. Like I'll have shows saved and then I go and sit in my living room mm -hmm. floor and put on like The View or you mm -hmm. know something mindless and watch it, listen to it while I'm taping together a pattern. So I actually don't really mind that much. Yeah. But no, I'm actually. Really I told you it's a good question for I've you. I've got different reasons why I like printed and why I, why I like. You PDF. have to pick. You have to pick one. <laughs> There's different categories. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that simple. Not that simple. Yeah, uh, I think I prefer. I guess I'd have to say PDF. And I prefer printed. Really? Yeah. Especially like McCall's stuff when you can get them for like 99 cents. Well, yeah, those for sure because I'm chopping that up. I'm not, yeah. I am not tracing. You don't trace those, do you? Mm -mm. Okay. Not yeah. 99, 99 cents is not mm -mm. Worth, worth tracing it. time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you talk about that, I guess because I'm more, I don't sew a ton of the right. week four, I'm more of independent. In, yeah. With the indie patterns, which are a lot more expensive. So for me, that, mm -hmm. you know, costs. So. PDF, I can always reprint, um, say I gain weight or something, who knows, I don't know. Um, but then I always have it forever, mm -hmm. you know, but, okay. Um, so next is, just two more left, what sewing machine do you use? Um, I have a Viking Sapphire 930, might be a D after it, I might be making that up, I don't remember. Um, but I got it from where I took lessons from Five Eight Seams. They started carrying their machines, so I got it from there. And I liked that I could use them for repairs, and they knew about the machine. Um, so I've really been happy with my machine, minus the buttonhole foot. Yeah, that um, is too bad. It does a lot of cool things. That now that I have it, and if I ever, well, I would hope I never need to replace it. It was an investment. Mm -hmm. um, but it does cuts your thread, which yours does that too, but the biggest thing for me on my machine is this, I think it's called pressure foot release, and so um, it will, it'll allow you to pivot mm -hmm. as you sew um, without raising any type of presser foot, mm -hmm. so it just, you just take your foot off and it goes up just enough mm -hmm. to turn it and keep sewing, so that's really nice for curves too, yeah. because it just automatically, you just go like this, and it just perfect goes so that it right amount of pressure. It senses it and yeah, automatically. You can also it. turn that off. I don't, I have never wanted to turn it off. I don't know why you would want it off. I guess if you just sew a lot of straight seams. I don't know, but for garment sewing, mm -hmm. it's amazing. I like really could not imagine living without it now that I yeah. have it. Yeah. I have, I don't know the number, a brother, Laura Ashley edition. I can't remember the number. I'll, we'll leave links um, down below for our machines. Mm -hmm. But um, I only sew on Brother. My first machine was Brother. Mm -hmm. Then I replaced, the, after that I got a cover, not a cover stitch, a serger, serger. Brother. Mm -hmm. Then I got a cover stitch that's Brother. So when it came time to replace my first machine, I kind of, I did all the research and looked at all the things and everything was telling me just to go back to Brother mm -hmm. again. 
So I did, and I, um, I, you know, invested in one of their more expensive ones. Not nearly as expensive as Abby's is, but um, it's sort of like a step up, but not as far as you can possibly go. Um, and I feel like mine has a lot of the features that Abby and Amber were saying to look for and saying that they liked about their really nice machines. Um, so I feel like it's comparable, even though it's not like super high end. Mm -hmm. But mine has, which neither of theirs have, is a knee lift. Which mine doesn't need it because of the, pre the pincer thing. You can take your fabric out completely. Well, no, there. I hit a little button and mm -hmm. it just lifts it up. Yeah. So all I have to do is move my knee like this to the right, mm -hmm. and it lifts the foot for yeah. me. Yeah. And then when I'm ready to put it it back down, you just pull it all the way back out, and it releases it and puts it back down. It's the coolest thing. But yeah. I don't know why it's like so weird now to put your hands in, in yeah. into the machine. Yeah. Like that's not that cumbersome yeah. or anything but yeah I love the Neela mm -hmm. I love the thread snips mm -hmm. that's very helpful I think too just upgrading my machine the, one of the biggest thing it felt me I felt more confident with was sewing with like knits mm -hmm. granted now I use my serger for most things but some um, knit, there's points where you have to mm -hmm. use your machine or if I'm sewing like a thick French terry or a double knit or there's just certain patterns where you couldn't use your, your serger on mm -hmm. The my brother it mm -hmm. wasn't that great, and mm -hmm. the Viking just, especially with that pressure, that mm -hmm. thing I keep talking about. I, I hope I'm saying the terminology quite perfectly. I don't know if I am, um, but it just makes the knit yeah. feelings just kind of glide through there. Yeah. And, and how about adjusting the needle? All those. Oh, points, that, that's thank really you for too. saying that. My needle, but I have like so many different yeah. needle positions. I mean, it just moves the teeniest bit, so it gives you like the perfect amount mm -hmm. that you need for like under stitching or for the your hem. And yep. yeah, that was huge. Yeah, <laughs> I love that too. Yeah, I love that too. Um, okay, last question. Do you have any other hobbies? Um, I don't know if you'd call it a hobby, but I really enjoy pampering my dog. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm not sewing, um, we're doing me, um, we're doing something with our dog. Me and my husband, we're um, either going out to dinner with the dog. <laughs> we always go. <laughs> Lindsay laughs. We like don't go to a restaurant unless they have outdoor eating, and you can take your dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which, in being in Charleston, you know, you can be out the side so many months of the year. I mean, there's very, like, yeah, a mini restaurant February, that. right? January, February. Those are the only two months are probably, um, yeah. yeah, so all, there's one restaurant I know of, two now, a new one, uh -oh. in Charleston, yeah, so we won't be getting there, <laughs> um, that don't allow dogs, and everybody brings their dogs, like, all the restaurants, mm -hmm. like, if you're outside, somebody's got their dog with them, it's just kind of such a dog-friendly town, like, you can go shopping, um, our big street. If you've ever been here before, you might know what we're talking about, but King Street is our big street of shopping. All of the shops let dogs come in, and they most of them have biscuits behind the counter mm -hmm. for your dog. So Piper, who's down here on the floor, knows all the little shops. Mm -hmm. So my other hobby would be spoiling our dog. Yeah. <laughs> I have a couple of other hobbies. Um, one of them would probably be planning. Mm -hmm. So I, you guys may or may not know, but they're just like the sewing community has this really kind of underground vibe to it. The planning community is very similar to that. So there are these people like myself that invest money in a planner and then they invest even more money into decorating that planner. Mm -hmm. So there are tons, dozens, many dozens of Etsy accounts where people are designing sticker kits for these planners and the, the um, stickers are cut out to fit exactly in all the squares and people do YouTube videos. If you look up plan with me, you'll see a little bit about what I'm talking about. Hmm. And outside of sewing, it's what I spend most of my time doing, thinking about, entertaining myself with. I mean, these plan with me videos are like at the end of the night, it's what I put on to help myself relax and go to Planning sleep. Planning helps you relax. That to me is like revs me up, like all the things I've got to do. Watching <laughs> other people plan. Watching other these people plan, plan with me videos are so relaxing to me. I don't know what it is. It might feel. <laughs> but I just love watching other people plan. It's just 
What, maybe because their lives are more busier than yours? We're like, ah. It's not even that. I think no. it's watching the page go from completely blank mm -hmm. and then watching it get all filled in. I don't know. It's just calms me down and the videos are usually pretty long like mm -hmm. 20 or 30 minutes mm -hmm. I, have, I don't know I love them so like if you scroll through my like Facebook or my personal Instagram it's like sewing planning sewing planning like that's all that there is in there <laughs> that's funny yeah I had no idea that I you love it though fall asleep to planning videos maybe because since they're such planners their thoughts and the way they speak it is also very organized. Their voices like, we're all are over the place, things. you know. Yes. Where they have this mindset that they're such planned people that there's <laughs> the way they chaotic. communicate is just very. Yeah. Our lives are not calm. chaotic. Yeah. It is, but you're right. It's very organized mm -hmm. and very, and you're planning the week ahead, so you feel in control of that. Mm -hmm. And their voices are so like sweet and yeah. calm. I don't know. I'll, I'll put a couple. Yeah, they're all moms, you know, super sweet moms probably that are. Or students. There's a lot of students yeah. out there. But I'll put a link to a couple of my favorites and y'all can help Maybe yourself you or a new hobby. just keep scrolling. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is pretty expensive. I mean, these kits are like 20 or $30 really? for one week worth of stickers. Whoa. Yeah, and so I do one every week, and then I also do the monthly view, which is another, like, 10 or $15, depending on where you get it from. Wow. You better you be think, sticking to that planner for that price, like, following all yeah. the things you said you're going to do. Oh, no. Yes, you can tell. The weeks that I plan and the weeks that I don't, it is so different in terms of productivity and mm -hmm. what I get done and how focused I am and how calm I am with everything. Um, things that I forget mm -hmm. or don't forget. Like, I don't have a very good memory, Abby yeah, knows. Yeah, she does not. So, writing things no. down. That's where it all started, just writing things down. And then I thought, this could be prettier. Yeah. And now it is. Well, I can't wait to see what you do with our new Colette sewing oh, planner. Oh, yes. This sewing planner, I am over the moon about. I'm already buying more sewing stickers. <laughs> I'm already like looking for ways that I can decorate mm -hmm. that planner. I'm really excited about that. Cool. Well, that's it. Um, those are the 12 questions of the seamstress tag. Very fun. Was not what I thought it'd be. I don't know okay. what I thought it'd be. I thought like hashtags or something when you said tag. No, it's like, so the idea is one person posts a video and they tag someone else and say, oh, you do it. Are we going to tag somebody? Yes, we're going to tag <gasps> people. Tag somebody? Yeah, I don't know. Everyone else has done it. So oh. it's kind of at the point now where it's like, if you want to do it, you, we tag you, whoever tag you too. are. Who, if you're watching, you haven't done it yet. Yes. If you have a YouTube channel and you sew, then we tag you. And so. let us know. But you did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, I liked it. Hopefully, y'all learned a little bit more about us. Yep. And the new viewers have already clicked subscribe because it was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching, y'all. This was a ton of fun. We will see you soon. Bye. Bye.